All right, here we have a ball which is sliding from A to B and we can consider this as a frictionless as a frictionless surface. And we can also imagine that we are looking at the ball from the top. So as the ball reaches the point B, there is a force, sudden force which acts on the ball. The question is to determine what will be the path of the ball after this sudden force that acts on the ball at B. Okay. So again, just uh, repeating it, the ball is moving to the right with a constant velocity. You can think of it as V. There is a sudden force which acts on the ball when it reaches a point B. The question is to determine the path of the ball after the impact of the sudden force. Pause the video, give this one a try. All right, hopefully you gave this a shot. Now the ball is going to the right with some speed V. There is a force which acts for a moment. You can think of it like a ball sliding on some frictionless surface and somebody kicks it. So there is a sudden force in the vertical direction. If you look at option A, this would make sense if the ball was not moving to the right. For instance, if the ball was stationary and if you kicked the ball, it would go in the vertical direction, uh, in, in the direction shown in the option. But there is some speed to the ball. It's moving to the right. Right. So option A does not really make sense. Right. If you look at option B, well, here there is uh, the path that is at, at a certain angle. So when we kick the ball or when there is a force that acts on the ball at point B, there is some instant acceleration in the upward direction. There is some instant acceleration. And because of that, there is some speed gained or some velocity gained in that direction. So after point B, when it is struck with a force F, option B does make sense because there is a vertical velocity which is gained by the ball. There is already a constant horizontal velocity with which the ball is moving. And as a result of which the ball moves at a certain angle because it has both a vertical velocity and a horizontal velocity. So it moves at a certain angle because of the resultant of these two velocities. So, so far option B makes the most sense, but let's look at option C. Option C does not make sense, right? It's, it says that it will go vertical and then it will make a turn. Again, it will not really go vertical right away because there is some velocity to the right hand side. Option D, well, option D is interesting. Option D says that the ball will curve, but it, it the ball will actually follow a curve path. It will turn, it will follow a curve path. Let's think about what will, let's think about what's really happening here. So. If we look at option D, the ball is moving in this path. There is only force that acts at point B. There is no force after that, right? But option D says that you gained the ball gained some vertical velocity and then the vertical velocity is constantly increasing, constantly increasing. You can see it is becoming steeper and steeper. Velocity will only increase when there is some acceleration. Acceleration only comes from a force, but the force only acted temporarily like momentarily it did not act afterwards so option d would have made sense if there was a constant force acting on the ball at all points would have made sense if this was the case so the constant force acting on the ball but that is not what is happening so option d is also wrong option e says that the ball gains some vertical velocity but then as you see the path of the ball there is some vertical velocity but then the vertical velocity is decreasing constantly as you can see it is becoming a little plateaued but that does not make sense for a velocity to change there must be some acceleration in this case if the velocity is decreasing there must be acceleration in the opposite direction but nowhere in the scenario that is happening so option b is the right option in this one